What would be the outcome if you took a psychedelic substance like DMT every day over a prolonged period? Let's say for about a month. Hmm. Will you go clinically insane? Will you achieve spiritual enlightenment? Will you unlock humanity's long lost psychic superpowers? Well, I can answer that question because I did it. So yeah, let's talk about it. Okay, so this is not your average weekend trip report. So I just wanna set the scene for how this all happened. The time frame for this was the back end of last year, which means it's been at least three months since this all went down. And I feel fairly confident in saying that I did not go clinically insane. Although I did make that one video of me talking to myself while dressed like a disco alien. So maybe I shouldn't get too cocky. Anyway, how this all came about is that towards the end of November, I was doing some preparation for a video on DMT dissolved into vape liquid. And throughout that process, I was testing different bits of hardware and different strengths of vape liquid. And it's kind of unavoidable that when making a video like that, I'm gonna end up consuming a lot of DMT, just as part of the creative process. It basically looks something like this. No, this one doesn't seem particularly effective. Something not quite right here. Holy fucking shit! So at some point I noticed that I consumed significant amounts of DMT every day for about a week. And because I was doing it so frequently, sometimes multiple times a day, I began to notice some very interesting characteristics of the substance that I hadn't really given much attention to. And this got me thinking, what further insights into this experience could I have if I carried it on for a month? Now, I want to be clear that this was not me intentionally trying to have full-on DMT breakthroughs every day, although for sure there were plenty of those thrown in there. But more than 50% of what happened was what I would call sub-breakthrough doses, where the intention was to stay on this side of the precipice in order to try and get a better understanding of what was going on as this altered state unfolded within my consciousness. And this was cool because it allowed me to notice some things that had previously kind of been skipped by really quickly without me giving them any attention because I was always in such a rush to get to the breakthrough. So I decided to carry on with doing these daily hits of DMT throughout December and sometimes doing small amounts, sometimes doing not so small amounts. And it culminated with me doing a large dose of DMT in combination with an MAOI, which was absolutely fucking bonkers and was pretty much the whole inspiration for the aforementioned talking to myself as a DMT entity video. But long story short, I was doing NNDMT every day for over a month. <laughs> so what I'm gonna talk about here are some of the more interesting individual effects that I noticed along the way. How these effects scale as the dosage increases, the difference between taking pure DMT versus what happens when it's combined with an MAOI, and my takeaways from the whole overall thing. I do just want to insert a few quick disclaimers here in that what I was doing was done within the proper set and setting. I had Rachel with me throughout this whole period to keep an eye on me. And as I just mentioned, this was not constant daily high doses. So please do not interpret this as a psychedelic pissing contest about who can smoke the most DMT. I'm really not interested in that kind of nonsense. I'm also not gonna talk in any particular detail about the more obvious effects like geometric patterns and amazing visuals, because as amazing as they are, I've covered them in plenty of detail before. So just assume with what I'm describing that all that stuff was going on. I will tell you upfront that doing this did not unlock psychic superpowers, which is not surprising since in my opinion, claims like that are juvenile shite, which actually cheapen the immense value that these experiences offer. And finally, I just wanna clarify 
that all this is purely just my own subjective experiences. I'm not making any kind of objective claims here that what I say is fundamentally true or that the same experiences would unfold in the exact same way for you. Okay, all that said, let's dive in. It's very common for me on DMT to have the experience of being in multiple places at the same time. And this might feel like parallel realities, the multiverse, or to use the language of my favorite book, Dune, the one who can be in many places at once, the Kwisatz Sadarak. Now previously, when I flooded myself with DMT in order to get to a breakthrough, then I'll find myself already at this state of separation. The come up happens so fast that suddenly I'm just in parallel worlds and that whatever narrative is happening is already underway. But by taking these gradual incremental doses and staying on this side of the lesser lights, then I could see how I got there. What I noticed is that consciousness divides itself on DMT. It feels kind of like cellular division during embryo fertilization in that one individual splits perfectly into two and then those two divide into four and so on. I could witness this happening to myself in that my consciousness was perfectly divided and I was able to witness this from each division as it happened. And as each division occurs, then its trajectory begins to slightly deviate so that after a few seconds, you end up with distinct and slightly different instances of your own consciousness. I can imagine this is part of what can make the DMT come up seem so aggressive and uncomfortable. And it's why we have what's referred to as pre-flight jitters. It's because our viewpoint of reality is being sliced up and it suddenly is finding itself in competition with these other viewpoints. And our brain is scrambling to make some kind of sense of this. On one occasion where this was really noticeable, I had two distinct instances going on at the same time. One of them knew I had done DMT and was settled in for the ride, while the other one had no idea I had done DMT and was utterly confused by what was happening. And both of these states were coexisting in parallel. Now, when you're having a breakthrough experience, you get pulled through this so quickly. What tends to happen is that after a certain amount of time, your consciousness begins to unify these experiences back into one sort of bigger bubble. And it's actually this reunification that feels so vast and euphoric as all these separate ideas with their own stories to tell coalesce back into one being. But when you use DMT in a more surgical way, then you can linger on this process as it happens. And I kind of came to enjoy the weirdness of being duplicated like this. And that leads me to the second thing I noticed the speed of thoughts. Once you've had one of these consciousness divisions that I previously mentioned, then it gives you a position to stand from where you begin to observe things about these new instances of consciousness and how they interact with the greater being of you. What I noticed is that as each instance appeared, it would begin to speed up in that I could literally hear my thoughts getting faster. And this was happening from the perspective of both the subject and the observer which is really fucking weird. In practice, this sounds something like this, with the overall speed and pitch of thoughts, which I'm listening to inside my own head, gradually increasing until they reach a point where I cannot keep up with them. Again, to compare this against a breakthrough, then this is what happens. At the point of a breakthrough, you get this kind of hyperspace information overload, where it all comes together into a point where nothing else can possibly fit. And then it kind of breaks and you break through. And for me, the sound of things speeding up was a notable feature. Now, I'd always taken that as purely an audio phenomenon and that what was happening was that my brain was interpreting sound being sped up. But for the vast majority of these DMT trips, I was in complete silence. So it became obvious that what is happening is actually the speeding up of consciousness itself, which ties in quite nicely with the subjective feel of suddenly having vast amounts of new processing power come online within your brain. To use a computer analogy here, it's not just that new CPUs have been switched on, it's that they have been overclocked to some sort of ludicrous speed. And this likely also accounts for the common feeling that vast amounts of time have passed within the five minutes of the DMT trip. It's not that thousands of years have actually passed, it's just that there's a time dilation effect happening within consciousness because your thoughts are going so fast and so more information is being processed per brain cycle, which we couldn't be interpreting as the passing of time. Next, I wanna talk about Clippy the hyperdimensional help desk. 
In my recent video, If DMT Was a Conversation Between Two People, then I included a scene where a DMT entity compared itself to Clippy the Paperclip, which as an explanation for you young kids was a kind of pop-up help function that was built into Microsoft Windows back in the 1990s. I'll just quickly play the clip. And you are... Excellent question, user. Think of me like Clippy, the Windows Virtual Help Assistant. I get automatically triggered to help sort things out in situations like this, where your brain's model of reality has gone offline. So the reason I included this was because this actually happened to me, and not just once, it was on multiple occasions where this help mode kicked in, and I genuinely felt like there was some kind of hyperdimensional version of the Samaritans who were trying to help me come to terms with this completely bonkers shit that was going on. I mean, like, try and imagine a futuristic group of telepathic babysitters working as a kind of IT support call center from another universe. Yeah, it was something like that. Now, this manifested in a few different ways. At lower doses, it would kick in and appear in the form of an entity with like the mannerisms of a preschool teacher. Kind of like, hey kids, look at this, look at that, see how it works, isn't this cool? And then at higher doses, when things were getting a bit more overwhelming, it would be more like a concerned parent with like, okay, I can see this is getting to be a bit much for you, let's take a moment to slow down and process. This really culminated when I did vaped DMT with an MAOI, and my brain was just absolutely saturated with the stuff, and it was completely batshit. At that point, what was going on with me was just too much for one of these tech support entities, so I had an entire help desk working on me, with each one rebooting different parts of my consciousness to get things back on track. Now, I realize I'm using a lot of modern day IT support helpline analogies here, but that is literally what it felt like. And I've always felt that DMT has a very technology feel to it, and never was this made more clear than in this situation. Still, what this seems to be indicating to me is that there is something there which is looking to help and guide us through these experiences. Now, whether this is some inner archetype or a built-in biological brain backup function or something wacky like interdimensional aliens, whatever it is, it's there. And it's there right across the spectrum from the low doses to the crazy high doses. The last thing I will touch on is what I got from this overall experiment on my own consciousness. And that is to have that opportunity every day to see things from a radically different perspective and take a moment to reflect. Now, again, you don't need to do big doses of DMT in order to get this change in perspective. This is something that happens even at the smallest doses. And it's pretty much the first thing you'll notice in any DMT experience. It's not just visual. There is a change in your headspace where you realize you're not looking at the world the same way. It's like the limiter, which keeps your model of reality in check, has been disabled and the parameters are beginning to drift ever so slightly, which begins to hint at the possibilities of new modes of being. Now it's possible to take such a low dose that this sensation, this reframing, is as far as the experience actually goes. So what you end up with is this kind of five minute change of perspective. And this is perhaps one of the simplest and most underappreciated parts of the experience. So I'd encourage everyone to intentionally try and explore this space without necessarily going any further. The reason I'm mentioning this is that when I was doing this month of DMT, I had a chat with a friend on my Discord server, and he voiced that there might not be any real benefit from doing DMT this way, because it's just a five minute trip. And there I would disagree, and I'll give you the same example that I gave him. Just imagine for a moment if you could instantly teleport to the International Space Station and just spend five minutes looking down on Earth at your entire species with all its accomplishments right there in front of you. And even though you only had five minutes with which to absorb the enormity of that radical change of perspective, that in itself would be a life-changing moment of reflection, purely based upon having a different perspective. No. Imagine having that moment every night for one month. Trust me, there is value there in that reframing, in that change of perspective. So, how to wrap this all up with a neat and tidy bow? I think I would first address the topic of whether doing DMT or any substance for that matter 
over a prolonged period of time is inherently a good thing or a bad thing. And my take is that it's neither. What you get from it, either positive or negative, will entirely depend upon you and your personal circumstances. All the usual caveats apply. Don't do it if you have a history of mental illness. Don't do it to be a tough guy. And if you do do it, then make sure you have enough checks and balances in place that someone can advise you if you're getting in over your head. Like I mentioned earlier, I had Rachel by my side all the way through this, and if I'd started getting delusional, she would have soon put me straight. This was something that just kind of happened to me organically. I didn't particularly plan for it, nor did I ever force myself to do it. I don't consider it to be anything heroic, it's just what happened. It felt right for me at that time in my life, and so I rolled with it. I don't see it being hugely different to something like a long-term plant medicine retreat, where people might drink ayahuasca four or five times a week for months at a time, along with other traditional medicines. So I guess the million dollar question is, did I get anything from this experience that I couldn't have gotten elsewhere? Like, did anything emerge from this extended campaign that otherwise I wouldn't have had access to, you know, just by spacing out all these into separate events a month apart? Honestly, no. It was certainly an experience, but I don't think that doing so much so close together achieved anything particularly unique. And going forwards, I plan on sticking to a more distributed psychedelic schedule. Now, if I went into the individual detail behind each one of these experiences, then I could say a whole lot more about it, particularly when I did DMT with an MAOI. But I think that would be a video all of its own. And to be honest, I think this one has gone on long enough. So maybe I'll do a part two if anyone's interested. But if you have any comments about your own experiences with the DMT, then let me know below or hop over onto our Discord server and have a chat with me about it. As always, I want to give a big thank you to my supporters on Patreon and a special shout out to the following people. Amelia Kay, Anthony Kalova, Mark Dusenberry, and Matheson Bailey, who have been extremely generous. And also Andrew Lay, who sent me this amazing piece of artwork with Rachel and I as mecha pilots from my favorite anime, Neon Genesis Evangelion. We love it, so thank you, Andrew. And to all you guys and anyone who takes the time to watch my content, then thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you next time on Adeptus Psychonautica.